The more you go through this, the more you're gonna notice that you do increase or improve your ability to keep your legs a little bit straight. If you have very tight hamstrings, what you're gonna find is that your knees are gonna be bending significantly in order to get through the movement. All right, what you're gonna do there is three to five movements Three to five, again, if you're super tight, try and get through five initially just to kind of get yourself warmed up. As you get a little bit more flexible, as you improve there. Once we are done with the inchworm, right? So you're onto that inchworm, you're gonna flow right here into your push-up position from here. What you're gonna do is bring your right leg out underneath you. You can kind of see me here. My right leg here is gonna be out at 90 degree bend from here. My back leg, as far back as I can get it, right, without obviously straining and putting too much strain on, the hip flexor. What we want to do here is then get our hands right outside of both uh, the, the foot and the knee. We're just simply going to press our chest into the floor. Should feel a good stretch coming through that opposite, so your left hip flexor as well as that uh, hamstring, the groin. And just get one pump there. Two and three. Then you're simply going to switch over, switching legs, bringing this left leg out in the front again. So from my hip to my knee to my heel, this is a 90 degree bend. Same thing with that back hip, knee to heel. Now it's not all the way behind me, but as you improve flexibility, you'll increase the range of motion here from your, your foot to that knee. Same exact movement here. Pressing into the floor, you're gonna get a good stretch right underneath this lead leg coming through the glute from your glute and a little bit of the hamstring as well as that trailing and that back right hip flexor as well. Also outside the glute, as you're working through that one right there. So we are getting some mobility built up in the hips. Loosening ourselves up, we're gonna go into our neck. So we wanna flow right into it. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna show you from a side profile, we're gonna do a yoga pose here, which is known as a child's pose. Simply getting down, you're on your knees, try and get that butt on the heels. From here, we're just gonna walk our hands out. And now, if you can, you can keep the butt as close to the heels as you can. Walk those fingertips out to get a good stretch. You're gonna feel this stretch through the, right through the thoracic portion of the spine. All right, might even feel some going through the lats here as well, a little bit in the shoulders as well. Main thing, try and keep that butt down when you're working. What you see a lot of folks is you're gonna be out here. Try and keep that butt as low as you can. Walk those fingertips out. Now from here, what we're gonna do is our pass through. We're gonna thread the needle, rotate. Right palm is gonna face the ceiling. I'm gonna thread it right underneath that left, off left arm, and I'm gonna turn my vision over to that right shoulder. What that's gonna do, that's gonna increase the mobility, loosen things up around the shoulder and the shoulder joint. You're gonna do that on both sides. So I do it on my right. Once I'm done with that, I would go back to my original child's pose position and thread that needle, palm facing the ceiling, all the way through. You're gonna feel this again, right through the thoracic portion of your spine, right through the back, the lats. A little bit of lean, or look at vision over to that left. Again, increasing the mobility, improving the mobility, loosening things up in that shoulder, getting a good stretch in there. Again, we're only shooting for about three to five seconds, uh, or I'm sorry, three to five reps, a second or two hold on each. We're not holding things anything from anything more than about two seconds. What we're gonna do here is then go into what's called our quadruped. We're gonna stay on the ground. Again, the flow, we wanna flow through this movement. From here, hands are gonna be underneath the shoulders. We're gonna be on the knees here little natural arch in the lower back. I'm simply gonna position my hand directly underneath my shoulder. Right hand goes on my right ear. I look at my right elbow and I bring that elbow right up toward the ceiling so I can get a good movement, good rotation again through that entire torso, right through the thoracic portion of the spine as well. All the muscles that make up the lower upper traps as well. What we're gonna do then three to five on that side then go over to that left side, left hand, left ear. This is what it looks like from the other side. Each rep you wanna try and increase, uh, or try and get that elbow as close to perpendicular so you can increase that range of motion working throughout that upper body there. Once we're done with that, we simply stay on the ground here. Hands come outside, out in front here. We're then gonna get into a bear crawl position, right? So knees are coming off the floor and we're simply gonna spring forward, come bring the hips into flexion, or in a, uh, full extension here and then bringing that back as we go and bring those hips into extension, into, or I'm sorry, into extension here. Flex there, extension here. We're just gonna get three of those, call, I call them the froggers, call them whatever you want. Um, the idea there, again, 
getting the mobility, getting those hips loose. We're then gonna flow right into another yoga pose. This is gonna be that upward, downward dog. Hands are gonna be out in front of the shoulders. We're gonna get up onto the feet, raise that butt up into the air so we almost make like a tent or a triangle with our body. My vision goes between my legs and I'm attempting to drive my heels into the floor. I get a full stretch through the back of the legs. Vision is between the legs. I then bring my, bend the elbows, bring my head down in between my hands as I go and flow into what's known as that prone position. If you can't make it into this position, you come, can come down under the knees, press the palms through the floor as you get a good stretch right through that front, that anterior portion of the body, all the way through the, the entire abdominal region, the chest, as well as the shoulders, and then back up onto the feet as we go back into that downward dog. For one, two, down flowing into, uh, into that prone position there. Again, if you have to go on the knees, that's fine. Make sure you're pressing the hands through the floor. You want to stretch out that entire abdominal region, the uh, rectus abdominis transverse, the obliques, get a little stretch of the chest and the shoulders as well on that one. From here, we're going to be on the ground, guys. I'm going to show you this one from the front, the anterior view here. We're then going to come down. We're going to bring that foot out. So my heel's right in line, just about in line with my knee here. Now, hands are going to be out on the ground. I'll move back a little bit so you can see me. And we're just going to come, drop the butt onto the heels, keeping the toes pointed straight ahead. We're going to get three here. This is going to fully activate those glutes. As you come from this position here, coming through, you should be feeling that right glute firing away to get you there. Let's get three reps here. We're then gonna bring the toe up toward the ceiling. You'll feel a stretch of the entire groin area right through uh, the knee, down in that lower portion of the leg. Again, we're gonna get three, one, two, and three. We're then gonna switch over and do that same thing over on the other side, same thing. Three uh, movements with the, uh, with the toe pointed straight ahead, and then three with that toe pointed up toward the ceiling, all right? What we're gonna do from there, we're still flowing, we're gonna be on the ground, we're gonna get going to get into a kneeling hip flexor stretch, right? So a lot of my clients will struggle with doing the hip flexor stretch from a staggered position, right? Being upright, losing the balance. So one thing we could do here, we stay into this uh, kneeling position, um, 90 degrees front and back leg, the knee is directly above the heel here. And what we're gonna do is our hands are gonna be right uh, about at our hips, and then just simply bring them right up overhead as you kind of push uh, your hips forward, bringing those hands overhead, right? We want to focus on pushing the hips, not necessarily leaning back. So we get that good stretch going right through that hip flexor and an additional little lean to whatever leg is up will increase that stretch through that hip flexor, right? That's going to be your level one. Your level two, you can get a little bit more active as we're in that split squat position. We're simply going to press that heel through the floor. We're going to rise up and get a full stretch through that hip flexor. We're gonna come back down almost into that split squat and then right back up. This is gonna warm those quads up a little bit. We're gonna get that stretch through that hip flexor and then coming all the way back down, you're gonna do three on that leg. Once you're done with that, we go into our staggered stance position here, right? So, so I was here for that. I'm gonna come up. My knee is directly above the heel of the back foot. You can keep it on the floor if you'd like. What we wanna do is we wanna get an anterior tilt, so the anterior part of our body right here. We're gonna stretch the hamstring here, and in order to do that properly, we wanna get that pelvis in an anterior tilt rotation. Cue you can use, push that butt back. Right there, I feel the stretch through uh, that left hamstring, and I'm simply gonna reach down and touch the ground and get one, two, three, four, or five pulses right through there the whole time. The hips are in that anterior tilt, the butt's back, the hamstrings are getting a good stretch through there. From there, we're simply gonna straighten both legs, all right? Both feet are now firmly on the ground, my knees are both locked out. Same thing here, as I tilt the hips forward, push that butt back, I'm gonna bring my hands away like I'm gonna push somebody away, you'll feel a good stretch going through the entire rear or posterior part of that up front lead leg, which in this position is my left from the hamstring right behind that knee into that calf area. You're gonna get one, two, and three pulses there. We're then gonna flip flop and do that same exact flow sequence on this left leg. From the hip flexor, we're then gonna come up, we're gonna get our pulses, and then we're simply gonna do the pushaways again. Now, what we're gonna do here to finally set things off, now again, we're going in close to about the 10 minute mark, showcasing um, this scenario off. What's gonna happen is it's not going to be that long when you flow through it, all right? This is just for the descriptive part of it. Now, the final one we're gonna do here, 
is going to be uh, one, another one. A lot of these stretches I got from either uh, Dr. John Russin or Jeff Cavalier. This one here, Jeff Cavalier works with his athletes. It's called a uh, the can opener. What we're going to do here is our feet are going to be a little bit offset here. Uh, my right, so my lead leg is going to be the left or in the front. Back is going to be that right leg. What I'll do is I'll give you a little bit of a vision down here uh, toward the feet so you guys can make out uh, what's going down here. I'm going to keep that right there. All right, guys, so from here, my feet are going to be a little bit offset. My feet are about shoulder width uh, apart here. My front foot is my left, and the back is going to be right. So my right toes are right in line with that left heel. Left heel, right toes. So my left foot is up, right foot's back from here. I'm going to be pivoting and using both feet to pivot. I'm going to pivot over to the right. As I pivot uh, on that left foot and come to the right, I'm closing, right, adducting the hips. So I'm closing the hips up. My hands are here and I'm coming across the body to open them up as well as get some movement through, through that thoracic portion of the spine as well as right through the shoulders as well. We're just going to get about three, maybe four. If you'll notice, both feet are pivoting here. I'm opening the hips up. I'm closing them up. I'm getting some movement, mobility through the glutes as well as right through that entire torso. Once you get a few there, you're simply going to switch feet. Offset, right is going to be the lead. Back is going to be that left. Again, I'm going to pivot. Right leg, my lead leg or front leg is going to be on the balls of the feet. I'm going to pivot here, close the hips off, coming across the body. Again, we're just getting some active movement here, going all the way through, getting a good stretch right from that glute all the way through, right? The obliques up into that middle back, the traps, or the lower traps, I should say, all the way through the entire uh, torso there, loosening things up as well as through the shoulders. Once you're done there, guys, you are ready to rock and roll with your workout. I know it's about 12 minutes here or so on the description of this, but again, uh, when you're going through the flow, it's through that flow and you'll also get a copy uh, move by move so that you kind of work on that when you're not in the gym. I hope this helps out for you. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me through the app or through my own personal number. Or if you know my email, you can also send me there. So guys, keep on crushing it. Uh, looking forward to watching you hit all of your goals in any way that we can help out here at Mac Fitness. That's what we're all about, guys. Peace and love.